this is Jerry Clark, and I want to welcome all of you to Murphy's Committee, The Inner Theories of Magic. I am so excited about the material we're going to discuss on this tape. It is absolutely some of my favorite information to share with people who still have that twinkle in their eye. People like you who still have dreams and who sincerely want to turn their dreams into reality. Why do I say those who still have dreams, you may ask? Well, I'll be willing to bet a million dollars that you, and yes, I do mean you, have already been pursuing your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations, and that most of you are still coming up empty-handed. I truly respect each and every last one of you listening to this tape program because you have not given up. You see, we all grow up as children with dreams of being somebody, with dreams of being great. But most of us slowly but surely get our dreams beaten out of us through the hardships and the daily challenges of life. And the easiest thing to do when you get slapped across the face a few times by life is to give up. And unfortunately, that's what most people do. But then there are a few driven individuals, individuals like you who want to know what is that outside force that tends to slap people across the face when they're pursuing their dreams and their goals and their aspirations. And what can you do to beat this strange force at their own game? Well, I'm here to tell you that the name of this strange force who wants to stop you from accomplishing your goals and your dreams is called Murphy's Committee. Murphy's Committee has a group of five members who have set up an operation in the universe that will test a person's level of commitment to the dreams, goals, and aspirations in which they're pursuing. I call them the interferers of magic. Briefly, let me give you a background on how this concept came to me. When I was 18 years old, I had developed a goal to be a millionaire by the age of 25 because at that age, I thought success was strictly a monetary accomplishment. Therefore, anything that anyone did that didn't involve making money, I thought was an absolute waste of time. Everything I did has something to do with making money. If I wasn't actually working to make money, I was studying something that I thought could make me money. I couldn't understand how people could read a book just for the enjoyment or the pleasure of it. I couldn't see how they could just sit back and watch TV for hours unless it has something to do with how they can better their financial situation. I couldn't see how people could work hard all week just to have the ability to go to parties and nightclubs on the weekend so they could spend all of their money on drinking and drugs and so forth. I mean, people would actually do things to themselves over the weekend that by the time Monday arrived, they had forgotten what they did. It was the most meaningless and ridiculous behavior I had ever heard or seen in my entire life. The bottom line is that I stayed focused on money-making endeavors, and by the time I had reached the age of 19, I was rolling in the money. I was barely out of puberty, but I was making more money than most lawyers and doctors made. I was well on my way to becoming a bona fide self-made millionaire, so I had to play the part. I started buying Italian suits, Rolex watches, and silk underwear. The money was coming in faster than I could figure out what to do with them, and so I started buying fancy cars. I mean, one of the cars I bought was a candy apple red Mercedes-Benz SL with chrome rims. I mean, man, this thing was incredible. People everywhere thought I was a drug dealer. Even the ones that knew that I would never deal or use drugs thought I had to be one because they couldn't figure out where all this money was coming from. Even the police department where I lived did a big background investigation on me. They actually called a Mercedes-Benz dealership and asked how I purchased the car. They had cops trying to be friends with me so they can figure out what I was up to. They seriously thought I was doing something illegal. They thought that the legitimate businesses that I had were only cover-ups for some illegal operation I was up to. It was absolutely amazing all the theories that people had with what I was doing. They actually spent mental energy trying to figure it out when all they had to do was kindly ask me and I would have gladly showed anyone. Well, the fact of the matter is they didn't ask and I didn't care. I just went about my own business of making money. I remember people telling me that I should stop and smell the roses, but I couldn't figure out how smelling roses could make me a millionaire by 25. I didn't even develop serious and committed relationships with my girlfriends because I thought that they would only slow me down. I was on track to making it big in America and I was loving every bit of it. By the time I reached 21, I had worked so hard and had made so much money that I thought I had arrived. By this time, I also started feeling very tired and worn out. I literally slept approximately 14 to 16 hours per week. Yes, that's two to three hours per night, and I did this for nearly four years. The toll of my body had finally caught up with me. I had completely burnt out. I was physically exhausted. I quit working all of my income-generating businesses and started spending the small fortune I had accumulated. I started hanging out in Beverly Hills and living like the rich and famous. I stayed at expensive hotels and dined at fancy restaurants. Before I knew it, I had spent tens of thousands of dollars and maxed out all of my credit cards. 
I remember looking at my savings account and seeing only $8,000 left. I was used to spending that in a month. This is when I realized that I was broke and that I was too tired to do anything about it. I remember thinking my life is over because I believe that once you have zero cash, I mean, once you had nothing at all left, that's it. You're gone. Well, to my amazing discovery, when I had finally reached zero cash, I realized I was still breathing. I was still alive. I found out that you can actually go past zero, that you can actually have less than nothing and still be alive. I had another revelation while I was down and out. I kept thinking that there had to be a way for me to get back on my feet. There just had to be a way. And you know what? You ask and you shall what? Receive. Exactly. Well, I asked and about 75 days later, I received the answer. I went outside one morning and I discovered my cars were gone. (laughs) You see, the lesson I learned was that missing two car payments would get you back on your feet because now I had to get good at walking. My bills were piling up. Creditors were calling daily. Some were even knocking on my door. I eventually had to move back home with my mom. I got terribly out of shape and I didn't shave for months. I stayed in a low down and depressed state for about eight months. I couldn't believe what had happened. The excellent credit in which I had deliberately developed was destroyed. All of the fancy cars, expensive jewelry, Italian suits, and portable phones, the three to $5,000 in cash that I always carried, foolishly, by the way, in my glove compartment was all gone. The house I was to buy at 22 was now just a memory. What had happened? I thought, why did this happen to me? I was a 100% legitimate young man doing my best to make it in America. I went to college for four years like I was told to. I got good grades. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do drugs. I didn't even drink coffee. All I wanted to do was show people that it's possible to achieve their dreams if they only followed the recipe of going to school, getting good grades, working hard at a job or jobs, and being committed to their work. How could this have happened? I stayed in this condition for eight months trying to figure it out, and I had to come up with some sort of explanation just to keep my sanity. I remember one night I was li- I remember one night I was listening to a tape by Les Brown and I remember him saying that the messengers of misery paid him a visit on several occasions while he was pursuing his dreams. He was relating this to Murphy's law which states that whatever could go wrong probably will. During this time I also came across a book written by a guy named Scott Alexander named Rhinoceros Success. It has some interesting principles and analogies. It talked about how some people are like cows and some are like rhinos. Since Scott first published his book back in 1980, many other marketing companies use this analogy for illustrating certain points to their sales force. Anyway, it was during this time that I created Murphy's Committee. I combined what I had heard from Les Brown and what I had read from Scott Alexander and called the entire concept Murphy's Committee. Now, I understand that Murphy's Committee is an imaginary committee created by me in my own mind as a way to understand and deal with what was happening to me at that particular stage of my life. And it has been instrumental in dealing with all the challenges which has come my way since then. And over the years, I've also shared this concept with people who have been facing some difficulties and some challenges in their lives, and they said it was very helpful for them. You see, anything that you want to accomplish that's of any significant magnitude can only be found on the other side of the jungle. It's obvious that the jungle is not the safest place to be. In order to survive the dangers of the jungle, you have to be in a peak mental and physical condition. You must have thick skin, a strong heart, and a charging spirit. These are some of the characteristics of a rhinoceros. You see, rhinos have thick skin, about two to three inches worth, so that all the gnats and the bugs and even the occasional arrows won't kill them. It bounces right off and they just keep charging through the jungle. They are rarely bothered by other creatures in the jungle, and they rarely bother any of the other creatures themselves. Overall, they're peaceful creatures who are very focused on what they want. However, if you get in their way, watch out. You have two to three tons of pure rhino charging at you head down with a horn that it will stick in various dark places in your body. Ouch! (laughs) You see, I believe that we're all born with the rhino spirit, but most of us are trained to be cows. Cows are passive creatures who graze through the pastures, accepting whatever comes their way. Cows don't believe that they can take control of their life and create their destiny. They are what I call volunteer victims of the system. They voluntarily give up their freedom for a mediocre existence. I mean, if you give a cow a regular income, some medical benefits, a couple of weeks per year of paid vacations, throw in a life insurance policy and promise them a pension that's going to pay them 30% of what wasn't enough in the first place, and a cow would give you their life for it. Cows try their best to live a risk-free existence in the pastures. 
If it's easy, they want it. If it's comfortable, they'll take it. If it's normal and traditional, they're open to it. And if all the other cows are doing it, then it must be the right thing to do. They have been conveniently programmed to believe that they don't have a choice on how their life turns out. They just do what the system tells them they must do in order to be successful. For example, they are told to go to school, get a good education, so that way they can get their good job with a big and stable company. While at this job, all they have to do is work hard, be loyal and industrious, and after 20 or 30 years, they'll find themselves in upper management positions with stock options. And by the time they retire, they're told that they'll be set for life. You'll have a great pension and social security. Oh, security. They love that word. And they'll have a wad that's big enough to choke a horse. Well, what usually happens is this. They get up in the morning to fight traffic while going to work. Then they work all day while constantly watching the clock. Then they fight traffic on the way back home from work. They eat a little dinner. They watch TV. They take a shower and they go to bed so they can repeat the same thing over the next day. They spend their whole week looking forward to the two days they have off. Then they complain because they have more month left at the end of the money. Family vacations consist of driving to the nearest campsite for the weekend. Or if they happen to fly to another city, they stay in cheap hotels and justify by saying, well, you know, we're not going to spend much time here anyway, so let's just go ahead and stay in this cheap place. Everything cows do consists of tight budgets, and they constantly worry about not being able to pay their rent for occupying their space on the cow pasture. Now, don't get me wrong. Even young rhinos in training occasionally may feel the same way, but they keep charging and they keep creating. You see, cows don't believe in creation. They believe in competition. They are constantly looking at the other cows to see if their grass is greener. Well, by the time they reach the point that they're supposed to retire, and and the system tells them right around 65 years of age, they usually say something like this. (laughs) Bottom line is this. They get the feeling that they've been had, but they still can't figure out what happened. They think of all the things they wanted to do, but never got a chance to do. And they wonder what their life would have been like if only they had done this or if only they had done that. By this time, they realize that they are headed for the slaughterhouse. Cows live the most depressing lives that exist on our planet. And what's even more depressing than that is that they make up a majority of our population, at least 90 percent. Rhinos, on the other hand, believe in excitement and adventure. They thrive on the dynamic energy and challenges that exist only in the jungle. They couldn't handle the passivity and the mediocrity of the cow pastures. There's nothing there but grass and manure. Rhinos realize that on one side of the jungle is the cow pastures, and on the other side is the land of paradise. And all of their high aspirations, their goals, their desires are found on the side where the land of paradise exists. Rhinos realize that there's danger in the jungle. They know that reaching the other side will not be easy. But easy is not an option for them because if success was easy, guess what? It wouldn't be success. It would be mediocrity. You see, it's easy to be broke, poor, miserable, unhappy, and overweight. It's easy to be bored and frustrated. It's easy to give up your freedom. It's easy to sit in the cow pastures and watch TV every day and wonder why you're not getting anywhere. It's easy to give up on your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations. It's easy to just sit there and listen to these tapes without completing the exercises. It's easy to just sit passively and watch things happen. Rhinos don't sit back and watch things happen. They make things happen. They don't wait for their circumstances they want. They create the circumstances they want. They don't focus on all the problems of life. They focus on the solutions. Rhinos take action, massive action, towards the attainment of their goals. Rhinos realize the power of their mind, and they learn and utilize the tools and strategies that will help them get what they want out of life. And most importantly, they understand that even though taking advantage of the tools and strategies that exist today is great and powerful, it is even more powerful to get off their butts and take action. You see, with thought, what you want is brought to you, and with action, it is received. This entire concept of rhinos, cows, and the jungle is just a way to let you know that even though you apply these principles, and even though you apply the concepts and the strategies and so forth, it's not going to be a cakewalk to your dreams. If this was the case, then everyone would be in line to enter the jungle. However, out of 100% of our population, only 10% will enter the jungle, and out of those 10% that enter, only 30% of them will make it across to the land of paradise. The other 70% will either return to the cow pastures or die in the jungle. Therefore, only 3% of our population will ever make it to the other side of the jungle. The other 97% end up either dead or dead broke. They end up dependent on their friends, family, or the federal government for their main source of income. Now, if so far you've been bothered by this discussion of cows and rhinos, it means one or two things. 
Number one, you are currently a rhino in training who somehow is confused wandering around in the cow pastures. Deep down inside, you know you don't belong in the pastures, but you've forgotten where the jungle entrance is. Or number two, you have been systematically inbred and trained and conditioned as a cow, and you're wondering why you're even listening to this tape program. You may believe that all this talk about cows, rhinos in the jungle is the silliest thing you've ever heard. And by the way, Will of Fortune or some other TV program is on and you should be watching it, you're thinking. Well, if you're a rhino in training lost in the cow pastures, don't worry because you're right on track to get back to the jungle. You are most likely the one who either completed all of the exercises contained in the Creating Magic series or you already think you know it all. Well, if you didn't complete the exercises because you think you know it all, that is probably the main reason why you're not accomplishing your dreams. That is probably the main reason why you find yourself lost in the cow pastures. That is probably the main reason why you're kind of lost in thinking, good grief, where am I? I'm not supposed to be here. If you feel that you are a conditioned cow, don't feel too bad because at least you're still listening. That's a good sign. It means your rhino spirit is being released. And the more you listen to these tapes and the more you listen to other tapes on personal empowerment and read books and go to seminars and so forth, the more your power is going to be released. The more of that genie that lies within you is going to be released and it's going to be revealed right there in front of you. The key point to remember is what I said earlier in this tape. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, is born with the spirit of a rhino, but most of us are trained to be cows. I say this because we all came here with an incredible drive. After all, we won our first race. Let me explain. You see, we had to outswim millions of other sperm in order to be the first to get to and fertilize the egg. It was an uphill swim and we made it first. As far as I'm concerned, everyone that exists on this planet has the rhino spirit deep inside of them and is a winner. It's just that some of us are more brainwashed than others. We are brainwashed to believe that we can't achieve, that we can't have all that we really want, that we have to be mediocre, and that the best way to deal with our situation of being broke and miserable and unfulfilled is to understand that we will get all the greater things in life when we're dead and go to heaven. (laughs) Well, listen, I'm all into going to heaven and so forth, but I'm not into living in hell in order to get there. I believe that you can create your own heaven on earth right now if you learn the proper strategies and apply them. You have the power to create magic in all areas of your life. And like I said before, you can create a heaven on earth right now if you decide to, or you can create a hell on earth right now if you decide to. The choice is yours. Just understand that no one said it's going to be easy. You will most definitely have visits from Murphy along the way, especially if you decide to enter the jungle. You're going to find out more about Murphy's committee and how they operate. You will learn how to identify a Murphy's committee member when they pay you a visit, and you will learn how to beat them at their own game and enter the land of paradise. In the land of paradise, you can be what you want to be. You can do what you want to do, and you can have what you want to have. You don't have to worry about the price. You will learn how to develop the thick rhino skin so that you can endure the challenges which will surely come your way during your incredible journey through the jungle. Okay, everyone, we're back. I apologize for a slight interruption there. I know uh, the thunderstorm, it was kind of difficult to talk through all that, but this happens frequently when you're in the jungle, and there's a lot of other challenges that take place also. Okay, now that you know that on one side of the jungle is the cow pastures, and on the other side is the land of paradise, the first course of action is to make a decision to enter the jungle, and when there, to stay long enough to make it to the other side. You understand that we're all born with the rhino spirit, but most of us have been trained to be cows. We talked about the fact that only 10% of our entire population will even decide to enter the jungle and only 3% of our population will actually make it across. Okay, where does Murphy's Committee come into play? Well, remember I said that Murphy's Committee consists of a council of five who have set up an operation in the universe that will test a person's level of commitment to their dreams, the goals and aspirations in which they're pursuing? Once again, I call them the interferers of magic. Their main job is to see if they can stop as many people as possible from making it across the jungle. Therefore, once you decide to enter the jungle, you better be prepared for some visits from the various council members that exist on Murphy's committee. You see, all I'm doing right now is preparing you because I know that many of you have your affirmations prepared, you're excited about achieving them, you got your goals written down, but you may not be expecting or you may not be willing to deal with what Murphy's committee in the jungle has in store for you. 
This is why it's important for you to know why you want to achieve what it is you most desire. Since I first entered the jungle in 1987, I've seen a lot of people come and I've seen a lot of people go. Some last longer than others. Some re-enter the jungle at a later date, but many of them become what I call COJs, casualties of the jungle, never to return again. I mean, they accept the slow-paced mediocrity of the cow pastures for the rest of their lives. Murphy's Committee got the best of them. Let me share with you some of the tactics and some of the tricks that Murphy's Committee may pull on you in order to get you to exit the jungle. Murphy, number one, usually sends your family and friends after you when you first enter the jungle. They try to tell you to return to the cow pastures where it's safe and secure. They tell you that, look, there's a lot of real jobs in the cow pastures, and they warn you of all the dangers of the jungle. They tell you that there's no regular paycheck in the jungle, and by the way, there's a greater risk of disease in the jungle, and there's no medical benefits there. So you definitely want to make sure you get back to the cow pastures to get your medical benefits. And they tell you all of the poor souls who failed miserably in the jungle, and maybe a couple of them are COJs, casualties of the jungle. Besides, none of your other family members have made it to the other side, so what makes you think you can? You may as well accept your existence as a cow. After all, you don't have to take as many risks, and it doesn't take too much to survive. This shot from Murphy number one is enough to make most people return to the cow pastures. After all, they love their family, and they don't want to really hurt their feelings anyway. That arrow that came from Murphy number one quickly penetrated through their thin skin and did enough damage for them to leave the jungle and return to the pastures. I see a lot of people leaving the jungle for this reason. But some people are more in tune with their rhino spirit. Thus, they keep charging through the jungle. Now it's time for Murphy number two to go to work on you. The strategy that Murphy number two used on me was to help get me in a situation where at the age of 21, I was burnt out and couldn't pay my bills. He figured that by having my cars repossessed and by sending the creditors after me, that would surely make me exit the jungle. And believe you me, I did feel that arrow. But one of my jungle buddies helped take that arrow out of me. And by the way, he told me that my skin was getting thicker. This encouraged me and I actually stayed in the jungle because of this reason. Nevertheless, this is a major and highly effective strategy that Murphy number two used to make sure people exit the jungle. And sure enough, many of them do. The few that remain in the jungle is laughed at by Murphy number three because he knows that his powerful strategies can surely make people leave the jungle. Murphy number three plays heavenly with your emotions. The strategy that he used on me was setting me up in a situation where I began to fall in love with a beautiful young woman who wanted to live comfortably in the cow pastures. Well, sure enough, situations occurred where I found myself living in the cow pastures with this young and beautiful woman. I even got a job in the pastures. And after a while, I couldn't take living and working in the cow pastures. I started becoming irritated and frustrated. I didn't fit in with the cows very well because they all noticed the horn that was starting to grow out of my head. I simply couldn't hide the fact that I was a developing rhino. You see, most cows have a hard time spending time with rhinos. And most rhinos have a hard time spending lots of time with cows. Rhinos are constantly talking about positive things about their dreams and their goals, about their jungle adventures, and about the possibility of bringing their newfound cow companion in the jungle with them so they can make it on the other side together. Cows get nervous when rhinos start talking about these things. Cows like to complain about the things that went wrong at work and not being able to pay their bills. And they like to discuss trivial and negative issues, such as what happened on the news or how bad the economy is. The bottom line is I had to return to the jungle and I really wanted to take this woman with me. But the energy, the excitement, and the risks of the jungle were too much for her. She decided to stay away from rhinos and I decided to return to the jungle. It was a painful experience and Murphy number three was surprised to see me back. He had did a great job playing with my emotions and I even acknowledged him for it. But I told him that the jungle is where I belong and that's where I will stay until I make it to the other side. I vowed to only fall in love with women who were promising young developing rhinos themselves instead of trying to make them rhinos. He was impressed with my determination, and so were the other committee members. You see, only a handful of people make it past Murphy number three. Well, nevertheless, Murphy number four and Murphy number five were determined to stop me, and they're going to be determined to stop you as well. You see, getting past Murphy number three is a major breakthrough. By this time, your jungle skills have increased tremendously. Your skin is thickening more and more through every challenge you have through the jungle. You become more and more determined to make it to the other side of the jungle. And for the first time, you actually begin to embrace the atmosphere of the jungle. You have even developed enough skills and strategies to teach the newcomers and those who are sick and tired of being cows and are highly considering entering the jungle. You can tell them what gear to pack, 
what to expect and how to effectively handle the potholes and the best route to take in order to avoid the occasional quicksand spots, many rhinos actually use this avenue of teaching newcomers the techniques of successfully making it through the jungle as a source of revenue to support the remainder of their expedition through the jungle. By the way, even existing rhinos come and hear these strategies just to polish up and reinforce their jungle skills that they already have. Okay, let's continue with our journey through the jungle. Several months and possibly years have passed since you first entered the jungle, and you may look and smell pretty bad. <laughs> All of your family and your friends who remain in the cow pastures are thinking that you've absolutely lost your mind by this time. They just don't understand why you won't return to the security of the cow pastures. Oh well, you're used to it by this point. By the way, your skin is so thick now that it doesn't bother you much anymore. You continue to plunge forward and all of a sudden you come to a swamp. It stinks and looks like manure. <laughs> Woo! And you notice that there's no way around it. You must either go through the swamp or exit the jungle. At this point, some can't stand it anymore. So they decide to leave the jungle and re-enter the cow pastures where they are happily embraced by their friends and family. Everyone is cheering and so forth. They're excited that they return. They knew that you would come to your senses someday. Some decide to stay at the edge of the swamp for a while just to sharpen their horns before they enter the swamp. And then there's a few brave souls who decide to just go for it now. They step into the gooey, slimy, and stinky swamp and proceed across. The smell is so disgusting that they can hardly breathe. Murphy number four is laughing as well as the rest of the committee. But at the same time, they are impressed because very few people make it to the swamp and even less than that actually jump in. Murphy number four, along with Murphy number five, begin to shoot all sorts of arrows at you in a final effort to make you surrender. This is when everything that seems that could go wrong, goes wrong. It seems as if you'll never see the light on the other end. You start to doubt that the land of paradise even exists. Maybe someone close to you dies, or you get divorced after 5, 10, or 15 years of marriage, or you're forced to file bankruptcy, or your house is foreclosed on, or the IRS audits you and takes everything you own, or, or you know, there's all kinds of things that could happen. Everything that seems that could possibly go wrong probably will. The important point to understand is that this is when you're closest to your goal. I know this is sometimes hard to believe, but believe me, it's true. Just ask any successful rhino and they will surely tell you so. You simply have to understand that Murphy number five and Murphy number four are making a final effort to stop you. If you persist during this stage, you have it made because pretty soon they will get tired of messing with you. They'll say something like, hey, uh, you see this guy, Jerry, or just substitute your name for my name. You see this guy, Jerry, he's still going. He doesn't seem to understand that you can't get by. I tell you what, I mean, he's no more fun. We've been messing with him for months. I mean, actually, we've been messing with him for years. And it just doesn't seem like he's going to get it. So why don't we just go ahead and let him go by and we'll go ahead and pick on somebody else. All of a sudden, you find yourself in crystal clear, light blue water walking towards the beach. It's the most incredible day you've ever seen with the sun gently bouncing off your now clean rhino skin. The most beautiful woman, just substituted for handsome man for you ladies, greets you, kisses you, and escorts you to your AMG Mercedes-Benz super stretch limousine with personal chauffeur who greets you by name. As you drive down the freeway in the back of your limo sipping a cool glass of Avion water, you pass a few cows. You look at their disgusting face and the sad looks that's coming from them. Occasionally, one would glance at the limo and you read their lips as they say, Lucky folks. The chauffeur finally stops on top of a hill at a security gate and electronically opens it. You drive past a beautiful seven foot water fountain in the center of the driveway. The chauffeur parks the limo in the garage and you get out and proceed to the elevator. As the elevator opens to the main entrance of the estate, you step onto a all black marble floor. One of your maids hands you a cup of cappuccino and you walk over to the living room where you have a majestic view of the city and ocean. A tear drops down your cheek as you think of where you have been and where you are now. The phone rings, and it's for you. It's an old friend who had the chance to enter the jungle when you did, but told you that you were crazy and that you'll never make it. You hear a slight strain in his voice and a silence on the other end of the line as he mutters the words, I wish I had. You turn to your beautiful wife or handsome husband. You think about your healthy children who are playing tennis on your tennis court. You take a look at your bank account, which is well into the millions, and glance again out your window while looking at the sun as it sets across the ocean. You say to your old friend, I'm glad I did. 
You see, the moral to this story and this whole concept of Murphy's Committee is this. Accomplishing your dreams and goals will not be easy, but it will be worth it. There will be many times when you just want to quit and give up. Those are the times when you must keep pressing forward. Sooner or later, Murphy's Committee will get tired of beating you. But until that time comes, you had better have some compelling reasons why you're in the jungle. Because if you don't, then I can guarantee you that you won't make it. You will inevitably be an indistinguishable part of that 97% of our population that retired dead or dead broke. Let me go ahead and give you a jungle survival tip. If you're getting chased by a bear when you first enter the jungle, because since you don't have your rhino horn, you may get chased by a few bears initially, the key is this. Don't quit when you get tired. Quit when the bear gets tired. Don't stop and try to negotiate a deal with the bear. It will eat you alive. The point is this. Bears don't negotiate. This is the same with the success that you want to achieve. You have to pay full price and you have to pay the price in advance. Most people want the reward before they pay the price. As Earl Nightingale said, most people want the fire before they put the wood in. Think about this for a moment. If you walked into a bank and said, I have $100,000 and I want to deposit it into your bank, but before I do so, I want you to pay me interest on it for one year in advance. The banker would most likely call a mental institution to come and have you checked out. Get over the idea of getting something for nothing. Only cows think this way. I once heard that in life you win some, you lose some, and some get rained out, but you have to suit up for them all. You see, achieving your goals is like playing a football game. You can't win unless you score some points, and you're not going to score some points without getting some resistance from the opposite side. Murphy's committee will definitely give you some resistance and understand that that's their job and they are very good at it. However, if you understand the laws of the mind and the concept of Murphy's committee, you will not be too disturbed by the appearance of ultimate defeat. Instead, you will rejoice and hold the vision of what it is you want because you will also give thanks in advance that you have already accomplished it. Henry J. Kaiser said that problems are only opportunities in work clothes. Henry Ford said that failure is the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. You see, I want you to realize that you develop character by going through the struggles. Once you've made it through the other side of the jungle, you will be surprised of the small price that you actually had to pay because you will be rewarded tenfold. Hey, I understand that statistically only a small percentage of our population will ever make it across the swamp. But that has nothing to do with you and I as individuals. Statistics are only relevant to the masses. All we have to do is make a decision to be one who makes it. Look, I also understand that this material may have struck a nerve or two with some of you, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. I believe that someone has to be willing to break it down to you and tell you the hardcore facts before it's too late. And remember this as you embark on your journey through life. Don't ask for life to be easy. Ask for it to be worth it. You can pay the price for success or you can pay the price for failure. Success costs pennies, but failure costs millions. I sincerely enjoyed our time on this tape, and I hope you decide to enter the jungle and experience life to its fullest. Remember, the jungle is where the action is. I hope to see you there. You have been listening to one of Jerry Clark's internationally best-selling audio programs called Murphy's Committee. To get information about other training programs available by Jerry Clark, be sure to visit his website at www.clubrhino.net. There you will have a chance to listen to free training samples online, read free articles, and obtain Jerry's Rhino Tips via his complimentary Rhino Tip e Okay, that's it for now. Until next time, be sure to remember what Jerry Durino Clark says. In fact, why don't we have Jerry say it now? Go, go, go! go, go, go.